I'm Beth Osborne. I'm an MFN member and also the Director of Marketing and Content at Marketron. Today, I'm excited to sat with Justin Krieger, Director of Media and Entertainment, Senior Analyst at RSM, as well as Matt Hoon, Director at RSM, heading up the National Sports Industry Practice. Thanks a lot for joining us today, and we're going to talk about the business of sports. So this is a sneak peek of your session that you're going to be hosting at this year's MFN conference in May. So we're really excited to talk about all things sports. And I think it's rather fitting that we're recording this conversation just a few days away from one of the biggest sporting events in the world. And I happen to live in Las Vegas, just a few miles away from the stadium. So again, thanks so much, Justin and Matt. Welcome. Um, we're really glad to have you here. And what do you, what are your thoughts on the big game in a few days? It'll, it'll be an interesting one. I guess uh, it's probably timely we talk about sports betting, right? I mean, the biggest prop bet question I have out there, Matt, is, uh, is there going to be a big proposal post game? I got to tell you, as a, as a, a longtime Patriots fan, it pains me to see the Chiefs in the playoffs. And listen, I don't know if it's because if it's of Taylor Swift, but I think she, uh, she has a lot to do with it from what I've seen. Well, she has brought a new audience to the NFL, possibly. So I'm just going to go on record to say that I will be cheering for the 49ers. <laughs> okay, so we have a couple of different topics to chat about today. Again, um, these are things that you're going to go into deeper in your session. So the first thing is the shifting media rights around leagues and um, this new avenue of streaming sports um so for example you know the nfl had its first um playoff game that was streaming only on peacock and fans had some mixed reactions about it nbc certainly didn't because they got a lot of new subscribers and they appreciate those um roger goodell has fielded a couple of questions about the future of streaming during his press interactions this week so what can we expect from this shifting media rights thing? Um, you know, what does that mean for our listeners, media companies? Yeah, you know, as we know, there's been a significant hurdle for traditional TV, as we'll call it, as they confronted the impacts of cord cutting, audience decline, and, you know, the really complicated but growing landscape of streaming platforms. Uh, you go back to 2010s and that just represented a massive shift in the way that we all consume media, you know, as cable TV model was completely disrupted by SVOD and, you know, streaming platforms now have an extremely commonplace narrative in our lives with almost 80% of households in the US having at least one platform associated with their household. You know, and that said, in order to keep consumers, you know, really happy with that continuous engagement, large media companies are just battling this really expensive content war with high competition and the continuous need for new high quality entertainment. And that's just accompanied with really high costs and also the streaming platforms that have to balance that push for profitability. Uh, in contrast of all of that is that Cord cutting increases in programming continues to shift from what we call, tr again, traditional TV to streaming services and that battle for consumers business. Uh, and what we're seeing moving forward, as you alluded to, Beth, is, you know, large media and streaming companies just continuing to increase their content diversity in the ways that interact, that they interact with customers. And one key example of that is streaming companies purchasing sports media rights. And we've seen that across, you know, the landscape over the last couple of years. And as the sports media rights continue to come up for renewal, we're going to continue to see and discuss whether these streaming platforms are bidding and how much they're going to bid. Yeah. Um, and Matt, I wanted to ask you about another big streaming announcement that happened this week. So ESPN, Fox, and Warner Brothers have just announced that they are launching a joint service. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's a massive story. I mean, you think about it, it's three giants in the industry here, right? When you talk about ESPN, Fox, and Warner Bros, and it's equal ownership between you know the three partners uh, set to debut later this fall in, in 2024. And the idea is that 
it's going to create this you know comprehensive sports bundle that brings together these linear networks as well as direct to consumer networks uh, and content and it's going to cover everything right it's going to cover all the major professional sports leagues it's going to call, cover college sports golf racing you name it uh, it will be part of that package and it's it's really a step in the right direction uh, towards just consolidating the number of apps that you know we have on our phones and in our, in our smart tvs right so it's certainly a little more consumer friendly and you know more importantly it's it's showing that if you want to survive in this business, you sort of have to adapt or die, right? Uh, you mentioned what what Peacock was doing, right, with with the exclusive AFC Wild Card game, and you know they racked up a ton of new subscribers as a result of that. They they made a you know a capital investment on the front end, and uh, it seems to have paid off based on the early numbers that have come out. Uh, you talk about you know WWE that's been in the news lately as well with a different giant in, in this sector. So, uh, you know, you're seeing these huge players that have these large bank accounts uh, take large swings and, you know, they're trying to figure out what's working, what isn't. Uh, and I'm sure, and this is just a preview of, of, I'm sure a couple months from now, when we're talking in Jacksonville, th there'll be another, you know, giant that has entered this space because it's really is an evolving uh, sector. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for, thanks for your insight. Um, so another topic that you're going to talk about um, in May is fan engagement and how that's changing a lot due to technology and AI. So what is the next horizon for the for the fan experience? And it, it's really important just to give a whole lay of the land on on this one. And you know, as we take a look at the sports industry as a whole. It's currently in the midst of a massive transformative shift. It's focusing on embracing, you know, new and emerging technologies. And these technological improvements across the industry are requiring both leads, franchises, and even related businesses, especially those, you know, just across the landscape in that like core uh, North American market to invest significantly in technological solutions to just improve team outcomes and ultimately the fan experience. So the continuous adoption of artificial intelligence by teams has just empowered consumers to gain really deep insights from in-game data, which is ultimately boosting their knowledge. And this technology, you know, I'll call it the tech evolution of sports is essential for sports industry to not only sustain their growth, but also to secure just a way wider customer base. And the significant investment of artificial intelligence by Sports League since the onset of, you know, 2023, we'll call it, has propelled franchises and athletes to just unparalleled heights. And this is helping them with just extremely strategic decision making uh, processes. And as we talk about artificial intelligence tools, these tools, you know, facilitated by routine integration of we'll call it visual and wearable technology has just empowered athletes and teams to conduct extremely thorough data analysis uh, on their predictive models and tracking movements, speed patterns and other related metrics it just facilitates a really comprehensive data examination by both teams and fans. And just to give you a little bit of a reference in the value of this market, oh, between 2024 and 2034, expect a 30% you know, just increase in valuation. That's really significant. And that's driven just solely by advancements in artificial intelligence. That's a big jump for sure. And I think, um, I think what probably the, the leagues and, and those and everybody else in that, all those stakeholders and what the fans want as well is a more personalized experience and technology and AI can, can kind of drive that. Yeah, and we've, I can tell you, we've had a lot of discussions with executives of sports teams and leagues, and that's exactly what they want to hit on, right? Those personalized experiences. And the reason why is they want to get younger, right? They want to figure out this Gen Z uh, audience, figure out what they want. And it really is this personalized experiences and content and social media. And, uh, you know, AI, I think, is a big part of this. You're seeing kind of the, the recent wave of even when you get into virtual reality, right? What what teams are doing embracing those AI-driven technologies? It's 
it's just not good enough anymore to just like like on us in the olden days right we could just go to the game and grab a popcorn and you know we'd be happy campers these days you know the, the younger generation needs a little bit more right they're just wired a little bit differently so we're seeing a lot of examples on in some of the newer stadiums that are really embracing that and 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 having success on their ROI for making that investment up front uh, and, and really creating that that loyalty with the younger audience so um, Justin mentioned predictive analytics too. I mean, that's something that there's been a shift in the last 10 years. And I think even more so in the last two to three where, you know, front offices, you, know, you hear a lot about money ball, right. And, and, you know, what teams are doing on the field. Well, you know, the, the franchises that are getting ahead of things uh, in the front office are also using analytics to their, to their benefit when it comes to things like optimizing, you know, season ticket pricing, right? And, and figuring out how to offer perks and discounts to generate fan loyalty. So technology, data analytics, AI, it, it's all part of, you know, obviously the future and, and it plays a big role in the sports landscape and it will, you know, over the next decade. So we're gonna end our discussion on sports betting. I know that's a lot um, interest to our listeners I've written quite a bit about it from an advertising angle. Since it's state-driven, local media companies are often able to benefit from it and generate revenue. Um, but, you know, there's different players out there. There's different rules and regulations and all those kind of things. Um, and there's new states that are that are legalizing it. Um, North Carolina will, will have legal sports betting in March. And I read that, you know, FanDuel and DraftKings are already investing and in, in trying to target those people. Um, so a couple of questions. What's the outlook for this from a media and ad revenue standpoint? And then also is saturation becoming an issue amongst the sporting bet apps? For sure. And I can high level touch on sports betting before I turn it over to Matt to, to dive a little bit deeper. But, you know, as I discussed when we talked about AI, the integration of artificial intelligence tools is revolutionizing data analysis in the sports industry. Uh, traditionally, you know, centered on uh, predictive game outcomes, sports betting has just really undergone a massive transformative shift. Uh, you know, it's that's entirely propelled by faster processing. Uh, enabled by 5G, increased accessibility, and just advancements in data and AI technologies. And this evolution, you know, has introduced a new era of sports betting marked by innovations such as things like in-game betting, uh, micro bets, uh, things like that where bettors can predict specific moments within a game without that capability that's readily available these advancements would just not entirely be achievable. Uh, and, and just to shift on the ad comment, and then again, Matt, I'll pass right back to you. Advertising has gone through such a massive transformation as well with just that shift in ad spend towards digital platforms. And as a result, what we've seen is, you know, that traditional TV has witnessed a massive decline in advertisement revenue, while non-traditional channels particularly streaming services, have experienced a surge in ad, ad investment. Matt? Yeah, it's funny. I mean, you look back maybe a decade ago and, and the fact that the big game, right, this weekend is, is in Vegas. I mean, I think that says it all, that just how much sports betting has become ingrained as part of the sports fan experience, right? And it's, it's kind of a no-brainer why. It, it's done you know, very incredible things to boost TV ratings, right? Fan interest across all sports. Uh, you know, it, we're talking millions and millions of dollars that an increased fan loyalty, increased fan interest. So, you know, the leagues are benefiting, the teams are benefiting. Uh, so it shouldn't come as a big surprise that uh, the NFL is, is leading the way and fully embracing uh, sports betting, right? The other thing to keep in mind, I mean, we're only five years into maybe six years now into the legalization uh, of sports betting across America. And as you mentioned, right, we don't even have all the, of the states, right? North Carolina is in the process of, of legalizing. But, you know, you talk about Texas and California, you can't you can't put online bets down in those states. We're in we're in the early innings still compared to, you know, other countries that have, that have kind of gone down this road. And you know, it's pretty clear that the sports betting sector is, is only going to continue to grow going forward. And we're going to continue to see, you know, new entrants pop up to battle the big two or three that currently control the market share. 
and uh, it's going to be interesting. And, and, you know, we'll see what happens a year or so from now and, and, and how much the landscape shifts. Because like I said, you know, we're in the early innings of this thing. Only the sports leader would, would comment and say we're in the early innings. I love that. 